and welcome back to another Army Builder Briefing. Today, we're taking a look at one of my new favorite armies to play, the Druze Bairam Security Force. Druze have a really interesting fire team structure that will primarily revolve around Druze, Brawlers, and also some Bounty Hunters. Uh, Druze also has access to a lot of really fun and interesting characters that either uh, build up those links and make them even better, or operate really great outside of those fire teams. Hacking is actually one of Druze's strengths here. They've got access to some midfield repeaters and also some really useful pitcher units. When you combine all those together, Druze can actually lay a pretty formidable repeater net in the midfield. Hopefully these lists that I'll go over today will give you a taste of what this faction can do, as well as give you a little glimpse into my mindset as I go about making these lists. And as always, we encourage you all to try out your own strategies and compositions because, you know, net listing will only get you so far. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we're here in Army, and we're going to go over to the Non-Aligned Armies tag. Druze are one of the mercenary factions in Infinity. So, the Druze by Ram Security Force. Now, when I first start out my lists, I usually like to start immediately with a core fire team and then maybe also a Harris fire team. And in Druze, you've got only one option for core fire teams, and that is the Druze. Druze are really awesome. They are only BS-12, but they make up for their uh, lack of like prowess. Like They're not BS-13 or 14 or whatever. They're BS-12, which is great. They're AVA total, which means that you could technically make an entire list of just Druze. And um, the big thing is they've got this X-Visor and BS attack plus one damage. So the X-Visor is really going to increase their range. So they're much less likely to be caught out of position where they are having to shoot back at a really terrible negative range band because that X-Visor helps a lot. You can also use it to sort of catch other people off guard, like maybe they weren't expecting you to shoot them with a combi rifle from, you know, 24 inches away or something like that. And the BS attack plus one damage just does a lot to help the Druze because even though they have BS-12, which I'm not knocking, BS-12 is great, uh, the BS attack plus one damage really helps it so that when they actually get those hits through, it matters, and they can usually take out their targets quicker because of it. So, there's a lot of options here, and again, whenever I like to start making a fire team, I always go for the SWC weapons first. So, I'm envisioning for this list, we're going to have some more of a defensive fire team that can, you know, attack, because, I mean, sniper rifles are great in attack. Um... But also, I want to create a bit of like a hacking uh, support because the one really great thing about core fire teams is they've got access to that sixth sense, which means that once we establish our repeater net in the middle in the midfield, even units with stealth will still be getting spotlit by us, which would be really great. So, um, when it comes to SWC weapons for the Druze. The two main ones are either the multi-sniper rifle with mimetism, which is really sweet, and then another one that's costs exactly the same is the heavy machine gun. Um, both of them have chain colts and viral pistols, so really you're just trading either a multi-sniper rifle with mimetism or the heavy machine gun, which has more shots, of course. In this case, I'm going to go with the Mimetism Sniper Rifle because I am trying to create that sort of sits back and has some long-range fire support. So we're going to go for the Druze with Mimetism. Um, and then because I'm trying to make sort of a hacking area um, for this list, let's go ahead and grab the regular hacking device. So we could do the killer hacking device, but... Um, because I want to add at least one more hacker in here, we 
you have to be able to ARO with the same hacking programs. So even though a killer hacking device is going to be really useful in defending other hackers, they actually, if they're in the same fire team together, they can't use, both of them won't be able to hack, basically. You'll have to choose one or the other. Um, so Drew's hackers. Drew's hackers are great because they've got Whip 13, which is awesome, and pitchers along with that X visor. So the pitcher is basically a repeater that you can shoot across the board. And that's great because when it's your active turn, maybe your opponent's like, okay, I've, I've successfully maneuvered out of the way of all of the repeaters and I'm safe for now. Oh, no, you're not, because these pitchers come from downtown and can you can place them in the exact spot that you need to really ruin your opponent's day. So, yes, we're going to take that. And I said I wanted another hacker. We could grab another Drew's hacker, but I think it's a good opportunity to show off Valeria. So Valeria is not that great a shot, but she does bring her own pitcher, which is great. She also has a zapper, which is going to be really useful in some situations where enemies have gotten up close to your fire team. And she's whip 14. That's a big deal because she does have a regular hacking device, but with an upgrade of total control plus one burst. She, I guess, just loves hijacking tags. Um, so this is... She is going to be really useful if we happen to go up against a tag because either she or our Drew's hacker can fire a pitcher right next to where the tag is hiding around the corner and she could just take over it. So let's grab her real quick. She is a wild card in this faction, so that means she can join this Drew's fire team that we're putting together. Now, there's one other type of unit. Well, there's a couple other types of units that can join these Drew's fire teams. Um, but since we are going for a like defensive core, I think that showcasing the brawlers. So brawlers are able to f uh, form any fire team with Drew's. Drew's is a fun word there. I don't know why that's how that is. Maybe that's how it is. Um, so they have Fireteam Duo and Fireteam Harris, so they can't actually form their own core Fireteam. You always have to rely on one Druze, at least one Druze, in order to make a uh, core Fireteam. But I'm going to grab this Brawler MSV2 multi-sniper rifle. Anyone will tell you that a MSV2 sniper is a useful tool to have in Infinity on ARO duty. So. Let's go ahead and grab that one. Now, from here, we could grab another brawler, but let's hold off on that for a little bit. Let's go ahead and check out, uh, let's showcase one of the other really fun things that Drews can do. So we've got these authorized bounty hunters. I love bounty hunters because of this school skill right here, the booty with reroll. I just love rolling on random tables and picking up random weapons or pieces of equipment and it just dramatically changing the game. It's it's a super fun mechanic and I definitely recommend trying these guys out. The, the thing that's really nice about them in Drews is that we have two of them and they are wild cards. So once again, they can join any fire team in the Sectorial Army. The ones to always start out with are going to be this SMG or submachine gun plus acrylate cannon. This is just a super cheap profile for 12 points, so it makes a great link filler because, sure, they've got an SMG, which is already a pretty good weapon, but it doesn't have much range. They offset that with the acrylate cannon, which is like HMG ranges, but it's like a glue gun. And, of course, because they have booty reroll, there's always the chance that they pick up something like a multi-sniper rifle or something like that that just completely revamps their roll rather than being a link filler and now suddenly they've got a gun that can kill things. So, we've grabbed one of those and we will probably try and fit another one in there because uh, there's only 12, but we've got our main fire team here. So, another thing that I want to showcase about Drews is... 
We've got this MSV2 sniper. That's great. There's another profile that we have access to that nobody else gets, which is Saito Togon, but he's a specialist operative. So this is a super... Um, Saito is a, an amazing midfield killer. He's got incredible CC skills, an explosive close combat weapon, and smoke grenades, which is really great. Um, he also has hidden deployment, so you can reliably you know, keep him alive until it's your turn, and he can go run off and slice something to absolute oblivion. Um, and it's just even better here. He's even better in Druze because he has the ability to be a specialist. He can be one of your midfield specialists. So because he's got smoke grenades, we can combine that with our sniper, if we want, to do the, the old smoke trick where you shoot through the smoke with MSV2. That can be a lot of fun. And it's not something I usually get to do in my other factions because I play a pan -O. So we've got that. Now let's think about maybe adding a Harris team into this. Um, well, we, we also don't have a lieutenant, which is a problem. So I'm thinking we could go for a brawler lieutenant. Brawler lieutenants are going to be the cheapest lieutenants you get in Druze. They're only 15 points. Major downside is that they might be kind of obvious because they don't have any other weapon other than the rifle and the shotgun, so I don't know. Maybe people will expect you to probably bring a specialist brawler or one of the SWC weapons, and so if they see you with a basic brawler, they might be like, okay, that's, that's your lieutenant. But... Whip 12 is also not amazing. So, you know, you you get what you get. It is the cheapest option. I think, because this is the Druze faction, let's grab another Druze. And I'm going to grab the Druze Lieutenant. So, this is another one that might be kind of obvious, I guess, because uh, it, it is the basic profile. So, maybe someone will pick this one out too. But I feel a lot more comfortable with a ARM-3, BTS-3, uh, BS-12 with X-Visor, yada, 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 uh, with all this stuff. I think it is Druze, so we're going to use a Druze Lieutenant in this list. And that's that. All right. Um, every uh, Harris team also needs some way to fight back, in my opinion. So let's grab one of these big weapons. We could go for the Shock Marksman Rifle. It's a really great midfield, sort of like mid-range weapon that is pretty cheap and um, doesn't cost any SWC. We are sort of reaching our cap, but, you know, we haven't reached it yet. So I think I'm going to go for the HMG. So I like the HMG sometimes. Uh, well, actually, I like the HMG a lot of times because um, whereas the sniper has the mimetism, and the five-man link bonus, which can help it really um, dominate because it's now basically BS-15. Uh, I like to have the Druze with HMG in my Harris team, especially because that extra burst from the HMG over the sniper rifle might help her win some face-to-faces that she may not have in the past. So we're going to go for another Druze fire team here and... At this point, we may as well put in that other bounty hunter. So, there we go. Uh, I guess one downside here is that we don't have a specialist in this Harris team. I usually like to have at least one specialist. Um, we may come back to that. So, um, let's see. We've got Saito, we've got our two fire teams, so now we can just... Oh, we are missing one thing. We've got Hansekuts. Hansekuts are really um, cheap because they are irregular and they have no armor, but they are midfield camouflage specialists. And this profile right here, especially the 18 points for a Ford Observer, rifle light shotgun, mines, and a deployable repeater, that's, that's the money one right there. Like, this is the one you want. The uh, sniper rifle, sure, it's okay. 
Grenade launcher, not amazing because of BS-11. Boarding shotgun is a specialist, but why would you want the boarding shotgun over the mines and the deployable repeater? That's what I say. So, we have AVA-2. Why not bring two? Uh, let's go ahead and grab them. We've got the points for it. So, I mean, at this point, we've got everything we need, and we can just sort of grab some extra stuff. Uh, let's try and hit the 15 order cap in this list here. So, when you have all of the main things you want, and you just want to get some cheap orders, first thing to do is to go over here to the Fugazi. Fugazi are your basic flash pull spots, really great, really cheap. We get two of them, which is pretty nice. And let's see, there are 15 points left. Hmm. Um, oh, sorry, no, there's uh, a bit more than that. There's 20, 25 points left. So um, we could grab maybe, hmm. Ah, let's grab a Pathfinder. So Pathfinders have AVA-3, which is notable in Druze. It's pretty nice. Um, and this is a, a toolbox unit, basically. They've got all, they've got a combi rifle, which is great. They've got a flash pulse. They are a Ford Observer, so they're a really fast moving specialist, basically. And so they are pretty useful to have. So we've got 10 points left. Um, we don't have it enough for another Pathfinder. We don't have any more Fugazis to bring. Uh, so there's a couple things we could do here. We could upgrade the Bounty Hunters to give them a bit more of a starting weapon, maybe. Um, we would have enough for like a Red Fury. Could be nice. Um. Or, okay, so if we're if we're going for the midfield repeater uh, plan, let's go ahead and bring something that can reload those repeaters. So the baggage bot is the Camille, and it's only eight points. It's another cheap order. This one doesn't have anything to defend itself, but, you know, it has the baggage ability, which will let us refill those pitchers once they're out. And... I mean, there are some, probably some other things we could do to um, clean this up a bit, get those extra two points, but I'm actually happy with this. So uh, let's move on to the next list. All right, for this next list, let's let's not beat around the bush here. Uh, Scarface and Cordelia. These are a brother and sister duo. One is in a big tag. The other one is desperately trying to keep said tag repaired. Um, so, uh, there's multiple loadouts here. Um, Scarface is great. Uh, there's some really crazy loadouts here, like the Mark 12 with plus one burst, heavy rocket launcher plus one burst, um, or you could grab the AP HMG and Panzerfaust, or the AP Spitfire with plus one burst and Panzerfaust. There are just so many options here, and honestly, I would say any of them are actually great. Um... I think for this list, I'm going to go for the AP HMG with Panzerfaust. So in order to do that, we have to go down here and grab loadout beta. So beta is going to be 81 points because it's not just Scarface in the tag that it comes with. It They come as a duo. So you also have his engineer sister who has mimetism. She's pretty sweet, actually. Um, and they can actually be in a fire team duo together, only in Drews, which is pretty nice. So let's showcase that real quick. All right, so we've got our tag, and why don't we try and build something around uh, keeping him safe in the midfield? So once he starts to move up and kill things, um, let's give him sort of a an area that he can move into pretty safely and still have some hacking support. So one of the really great tools that we have access to is the Peacemaker. Peacemaker is a really awesome uh, forward deployment plus eight inch uh, remote that 
has a ox bot as well that has a uh, heavy flamethrower. This is really great because it's a forward deploying repeater. So you start the game with a repeater in the basically the midfield, and it's only 20 points. So you can use this as either a defensive piece where you're just watching a, an area that you know your opponent might want to come through, or you can use it as sort of a suicide run. Uh, send especially this ox bot is very expendable. You can just send it to go and flame some sort of um, midfield specialist or something like that, and keep the bot safe. Or lay down three templates basically with this heavy shotgun and the heavy flamethrower. So let's go ahead and grab this. So we'll have a little safe space that our Scarface can move into. And because of that, um, because we're planning on that, let's go ahead and make sure we have a killer hacker in our main fire team. So very similarly to the last one, we're going to start with the Druze core. And this time I'm going to go for the HMG. And we definitely want that killer hacker. And at this point, let's go ahead and try out um, that Brawler Lieutenant that I was talking about earlier. Um, since we're bringing Scarface, it might be a little pricey to bring another Druze Lieutenant. So let's go ahead and try out the Brawler. Because after all, I mean, it's only a difference of one willpower uh, for that Lieutenant role. Um, and then uh, let's go for a hybrid core. So let's grab the Brawler MSV2 Sniper again. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just a great piece. You don't always have to bring the Brawler MSV2 Sniper, but I highly recommend you buy the Brawler box to go with the Druze. They're really great. And uh, just to round this off, I think I'm going to grab that trusty SMG Bounty Hunter profile. So we've got our one, two, three, four, five. Got our core. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and try, um, let's grab a couple of Hansakuts, just like last time, that sweet 18 point profile, uh, and let's, let's go ahead and, oh, that's, that's interesting, oh, this is the, uh, tactical awareness order, of course. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and make a Harris team. So for the Harris, we can go for either a Brawler or Drew's Harris. Um, let's go ahead and grab the Brawler HRL. This is a pretty great, um, this is honestly a really solid piece. Uh, most HRLs are pretty cheap and they usually come with a really awesome backup weapon like the Assault Pistol. So this is going to be a really great tool to move our Harris up. And once they get close, you can always default to that assault pistol and uh, still be in the fight, which is great. Um, I'm not going to make the same mistake as last list. I want a specialist in here. So we could grab the Brawler Doctor. That could be good. And then just to save some points, let's go ahead and grab that SMG Bounty Hunter again. So we only have uh, three points left. So we could go ahead and just round this off with a War Core. Yeah, that, that seems all right. Um, I might actually put this Hunskut in the second pool, just so that they have a bit more of some oomph when they need to go and press a button or two. Um, alternatively, I guess one of the things we could do is we could try dropping the Hunzakut and go for some more orders like a couple Fugazi and uh, I guess we could we could upgrade the Brawler Doctor or this SMG Bounty Hunter. We don't have any more SVC, which is a problem. Mm. Uh, let's see. 
we could go for instead of a doctor, we could go for the Drew's paramedic. And then we're just three points over, so we could grab that Orcor and take it away. Now the Brawlers will have a bit more of a capable um, paramedic along with them that's got like access to a chain colt, which is pretty nice, and the viral pistol, of course. And yeah, that's an option. So um, yeah, this is another, I, I like this. So we've got our tag, we've got our main core fire team helping defend the tag, but also providing some really decent fire support We've got a Hunzakut, could bring two, and then we've got a Harris team that does have a specialist in it this time so that they can press buttons once they move into the midfield. All right, well, let's go on to the next one. All right, for this next list, let's showcase some other things that Drews has to offer. Uh, let's go ahead and make our basic core team real quick. Um, we're gonna grab the Drews HMG, uh, if we want, we could do the Brawler Lieutenant, but for this fire team, I'm going to have a lot of Brawler, a, a few Brawlers, but uh, if this Druze HMG goes down, remember the Druze are the source of the core fire team. So if the Druze HMG goes down as we're, you know, moving around killing with her, um, the whole core will not be able to function. I guess they could reform as a Harris, but... If we already have a Harris, then that's a problem. So I'm going to go for the Drew's Lieutenant again. And uh, let's grab the Brawler Doctor, just in case one of them goes down. And that MSV2 Sniper, of course. Bring that up top. And to round it out, let's grab that trusty Bounty Hunter. And okay. So now we've, we've got a base list, a base fire team. Let's go ahead and showcase some of the other stuff. So we did make a Harris team earlier with the Brawler Heavy Rocket Launcher. So let's go ahead and grab that. Um, and, oh, let's grab the Drew's Shock Marksman Rifle. As I said earlier, this is a really awesome... Uh, weapon that has a bit ex bit of some extra reach over a combi rifle but even further because of that x-visor so it's a great weapon to have running around and shooting at things especially because bs attack plus one damage that's a damage 14 marksman rifle so really great and uh let's go ahead and just round that off again with another smg bounty hunter so we have access, we don't have any combat jump units in Druze, but we do have some parachutist units, and they're a really interesting parachutist unit as well. They have hollow mask and hollow projector, and surprise attack minus three to go along with those. All right. it's, a, it's a pretty interesting unit because it's got arm two, which is great, really low BS of 11, and no BTS. But there's a, a lot of really fun and interesting things you can do with this. You could maybe, you know, hollow mask. Maybe you don't deploy this in a parachutist state. Maybe you deploy it in your deployment zone and maybe hollow mask as, I don't know, maybe Arslan, who is a lieutenant option. And maybe you deploy, you purposefully deploy this Bashi a little bit out of like as if you misdeployed so your opponent sees that and it's like ooh, this is a great opportunity to go and kill his lieutenant and then maybe they waste their entire turn moving over only to find out that once they get there and kill the thing it was only a 12 point bashi bazook so let's go ahead and try that out we're going to grab one of those and I mean, there are some other really great profiles here I want to point out. So there's the AP rifle with breaker pistol plus one burst. That's an amazing combination of weapons. Um, so we might want to grab that one. But the other thing that's kind of nice is they've got a specialist operative, which does have a rifle and light shotgun. So 
I think it'll depend on how many specialists we have already. I'm going to grab this one first, and we'll see what happens. So, once again, we should probably grab our faithful Hunzikuts, these two. And I'm going to go ahead and put one in each pool, just because that's what I like. And, oh, another super fun thing that we have access to is the Bulleteer. The Bulleteer is a... Uh, a bot with Mimicism minus six that basically every faction in Infinity would be like, yeah, I, I would like one of those, please. So um, they're really fast. They have the Mimicism minus six, and they've got a Spitfire for only 23 points. So they do have Fire Team Duo as well. We could grab the Heavy Shotgun to go along with it, but here's a fun little trick that I really like. Because Valeria is a wild card, she can join that duo with the Bulleteer. And now, Valeria and the Bulleteer are moving around together. Uh, the Bulleteer is going and shooting and killing things, and notice, the Bulleteer has a repeater on it. So, Valeria can have her hacking network of her own zone of control, and then she can be alongside this Bulleteer, which also has his own sort of a zone of control that she can hack through. Okay, so that's that's a really fun little combo that we can do here, and I really like a lot. Um, speaking of other characters, actually, let's go ahead and check out Dawu. So, because we can only bring 15 orders, and because we are bringing two irregulars in each pool, we really want to be able to protect our orders if we end up going first. And Dawu has some really great, uh, a really great ability called Counterintelligence, which will prevent our opponent from taking two regular orders away from us if we happen to go first. He also has Hollow Mask, and he's surprisingly terrifying in close combat, combined with the CC21, CT Attack minus six, that's for your opponent by the way, Natural Born Warrior, and either a monofilament weapon or a burst tube viral pistol in close combat. Like, it's just, it's kind of ridiculous. And of course, for even like, more craziness, he's got a nanopulsor plus two burst. So that's three nano nanopulsor shots. It's just wild. And then a flash pulse plus one burst. So two whip 14 flash pulses coming out from this guy. Um, he's another opportunity, he's another option to sort of hollow mask as something maybe benign that you don't want to kill him, or maybe you could pretend to be, I don't know, something really scary that someone wouldn't want to go up and kill. Um, I actually really like using Dawu in, um, objective room missions, surprisingly, because I like putting him, just bringing him up. He can pretty reliably clear the room, sacrificing himself in the process, but that nano pulsar plus two burst will just freak people out. Like, uh, there's, there's nothing like it, especially if you hollow mask as something walking up to the room. They're like, oh, well, I'll just shoot you. Okay, well, I'm going to reveal and template all of you. So uh, it's a really fun little ability he's got there. So, yeah, because we've got those irregulars, we want to be able to protect our orders, and I think Dawu is exactly the man for that job. So, uh, let's do one more list. For this last list, we are going to throw caution to the wind and just go crazy with all sorts of like different, unique, and interesting items that we can put together. So, um, let's see. One of the cool things, we talked about how Bashi can um, pretend to be other things that they're not, right? Uh, so one of the fun things that we can do is we can combine that with Armand Lemuet, the freelance killer. Armand is a really interesting um, sniper. He's basically he's a sniper unit that is um, he has transmutation wounds because he is a Toha mercenary basically. Um, so his 
first form has Mimetism minus six, which makes him a very scary unit to go up against. Um, he does have forward deployment, which can help him get up a bit further, but we're not going to use that in this instance because we're going to do something a little bit uh, cheeky with him. We're going to go for the MSV1 profile. If you have the extra point, I feel that it's useful. The mine layer is great, of course, but now that MSV1 can sort of stop smoke from going down, or rather, it can see through smoke still, um, I think it's a really useful thing to have, especially on an ARO piece. So let's go ahead and grab him. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab Abashi and uh, we're going to pretend that we have four Armand Lemuets because the Bashi has Hollow Mask and Hollow Projector. So is this ridiculous? Yes. Will it slow down your opponent? Maybe. Will it confuse them for a bit? Definitely. Um, it's just a fun thing that you can do. They either um, they either guess correctly and they shoot Armand, and he just shoots back, or they guess incorrectly and they shoot a hollow projector uh, decoy, or at the Bashi itself, who either dies or dodges. It's uh, it's just a fun thing that you can do. So we're gonna we're gonna do it now. We've been sort of dancing around Lieutenant options here. We've been talking about the Brawler, we've been talking about the Druze, but come on. The only true Lieutenant is Security Chief Arslan. He is the leader of this mercenary faction, and so I think he should be in one of these lists. He is a bit of a better shot than the other Druze because he's BS 13, which is pretty nice. He does have no wounding cap, which is pretty awesome. It makes him basically 1.5 wounds. Notice he doesn't have um, shock immunity though, so watch out for shock weapons. But he does dodge a little bit better because he has dodge plus three. And uh, he trades his X visor for MSV1, which is uh, it, it's a decent trade, honestly. It's, uh, it's another useful tool to have in your list. He is a little expensive, but who cares? We are bringing Arslan. Now, because we've got Armand holding down the fort as our um, arrow, I'm actually not going to put a uh, sniper in our main fire team, which of course is the Druze fire team. Instead, I'm gonna do something a little different. So we have the HMG, we're gonna grab that. Sorry, I keep saying we're going to do something different, and then we grab the HMG. Um, but one of the things I have not mentioned that is really terrifying that the Druze have access to is the combi rifle with grenade launcher and EM grenade launcher. This thing, combined with the X-Visor, combined with the five-man bonus from the fire team, can launch grenades practically across the table on a nine, basically, and uh, just blow things up. I mean, if it's a, um, a tag or a group of remotes, just blast them with the EM grenade launcher and watch them cry. Um, or the grenade launcher, when your opponent happens to bunch up their main core fire team, and maybe they were all bunched up around a corner and you're just like, all right, well, here comes a grenade from the sky right on your head. Um, it's definitely an attack of opportunity sort of deal uh, where you use that grenade launcher, speculative firing um, when you see a really great target. But it's just a really incredible threat that I have to mention. I can't just blow over it when I'm making a list video like this. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this out with just your standard things like the Brawler Doctor. Something that can heal people if they get knocked down. We're going to grab the Bounty Hunters. Go ahead and grab two. One of these is going to go into our Harris team, which will be led by Wolfgang. 
So, uh, Wolfgang is another character we haven't mentioned here. There's so many fun characters in uh, Druze. Wolfgang has two wounds, so he's basically our only, like, heavy infantry guy, quote-unquote. Um, he's really great in CC. He's really great at dodging. And he's got climbing plus so he can get to things. That's why I really like to either have him on his own, so he's just running around, dodging, shooting things, or in a Harris that's going to be pretty aggressive and moving up. So, he, I mean, he's just really great. He's 35 points. He's got a multi-rifle that already has plus one burst. So, I have to imagine he's dual wielding him. He is a wild card, so he can join any fire team in this army, and that's why he is going in our Harris. So, currently we only have two wild cards for our Harris, so we've got to have a Harris base. And I am just going to grab another Brawler Doctor to finish that out. Yes, we don't have much in terms of range with this uh, Harris team, but I mean, we've got Armand to clear the way. We've got the Drew's HMG to clear the way. So I feel comfortable with moving these guys up and having them wreak havoc in the midfield once they get there. And like I said, you never know that bounty hunter might pick up a sniper rifle and uh, that'll really be pretty great. Um, let's see, one of the other characters that we haven't used yet that I actually really love is Ida Swanson. Ida is a four deployment plus four. Uh, she's basically just a, a killer, basically. She, she doesn't have um, any specialist abilities, but she has booty, so she gets to re-roll. Or, sorry, she doesn't get to re-roll. She, she just gets to roll on the randomized table, which is super fun. And um, I guess it is worth mentioning that she is a Shazvasti. Uh, so, you know, watch your back around her. But the good thing about that is that if you use her for a uh, zone domination and she gets knocked unconscious, she will still contribute her 23 points to claiming that zone. She has an SMG plus one burst, which is really great. I mean, she just shreds up close, basically. And she also has Viral Mines and a Viral Pistol, which really matches the theme of Drews with their Viral Pistols. And I just find that, for me, having to go up against Austin's uh, um, Ariadna all the time, having those Viral Mines is so good. And for only 23 points, she's just... She's a whole big bundle of fun, in my opinion. So, we're gonna grab Ida. Now, let's rearrange this stuff a bit. If we're planning to have Armand on ARO duty, anytime you have someone on ARO duty, you expect them to die, so I'm going to stick them in the second pool. Ida wants to be running around, so I'm going to give her more orders. And from here, let's go ahead and try to... Well, I guess before we do anything else, we should probably grab at least one Hunzikut. Uh, just, you know, to press the buttons. Don't have enough for a second one, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and start filling out the rest of our orders. Uh, we could grab um, Fugazi and a Fugazi. So there. Um, now we've got almost 15 orders. That's fine. Um, only two points left. We could try and upgrade some things. I think to finish it off, I'm just going to upgrade this Bashi from the 12 point variant to that really sweet AP rifle breaker pistol plus one burst. If it survives, those weapons will be really useful. And I think that's that's pretty solid. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, I had a lot of fun making this and I also really like playing Druze. The Druze are just, um, you get the opportunity to play so many things that you might, I don't know. I feel like I've learned a lot playing Druze because, you know, you're playing with a bunch of units that have BS-12 as the maximum. You know, if you bring, um, if you bring one of the tags, you've got BS-13. If you bring Arslan, you've got BS-13. Uh, Armand is BS-13. But for the most part, most of these guys are only BS-12. And I think it's been a really 
fun experience for me because I've started to realize that, you know, BS12 is completely fine. Like, you can kill things with BS12. And I should have known, I, I have known that because I play Pano and I've got the Fusiliers. They just kill things all the time. It's just been really liberating to play this army and realize that, you know, I've got the tools to get the job done in any army I play. So, I hope you all enjoyed this video. We are working on more faction overviews. I'm in the process of working on the OSS one right now. And we will have more coming soon. So, thank you all for watching, and goodbye.